Comrade Chairman Mario Mitchell, all of the distinguished comrades on the platform, comrades, workers, warriors, supporters from Southeast St. Elizabeth and other parts of St. Elizabeth and even beyond. First of all, I want to say it's an honor and a privilege to be here in Junction again to talk to you tonight. I really enjoyed our motorcade today. As we went through the highways and byways of Southeast St. Elizabeth, although the roads were in a deplorable and terrible state, the people came out to greet us. Even though it was drizzling rain a lot of the time, they came out and I saw and felt that the people have the energy for change. The people of Southeast St. Elizabeth are saying, come back PNP, come back. We want you back. We want better. We want change. And comrades, you're getting a very experienced politician as your candidate. You're getting a man who is accustomed to running things efficiently and well. A man who has earned the respect as a top local government practitioner in this country, who has represented the people of the division from where he comes very, very well. And he said to me, Comrade Leader, I want to go to Southeast St. Elizabeth. I believe the people there will accept me. And I believe I will serve them well. And I will deliver that constituency in the column of the People's National Party whenever the time comes. And I said to him, Scotty, I know you can do it. And if the people here will accept you, you have my blessing. And I want to say to the executive committee of Southeast St. Elizabeth, respect you because you approach this matter with maturity and with political acumen and we delivered a smooth transition and Norman Scott is now your candidate on the road to victory for the People's National Party here in this great constituency of Southeast St. Elizabeth. <laughs> Comrades, we've had some excellent speeches tonight. It has been a powerful evening. I hope you've enjoyed it and learned as much as I have in tonight. And I think the fire has been burning on this stage. And it is going to be resounding all across the country. When the truth is spoken, the power of the truth cannot be suppressed. As much as they would want to use threats of litigation and have their friends in the media make sure that certain things don't get the emphasis and coverage that it deserves, that doesn't matter to us. Because we have our ways and means of communicating. We will go on the ground and we will have our meetings with the people all over this country. So that their message and our message to them is heard. Because that is how we brought this party back from where we were in 2020 to where it is now. With the Jamaica Labour Party a run up and down as a confused organization. They don't know what has happened. Because Marky G and the PNP come here now to take over the thing and put Jamaica on the right track again. Comrades and friends, we mustn't be complacent. We mustn't take anything for granted. It is not going to be an easy road. We must all pull together. We must all rally behind each other. 
and we must all show the commitment to do the work that is required and to make sure that when election day comes every PNP who has the right to vote come out and vote in this constituency and I want to tell you some labor right now go vote because them vexed and them disheartened I met some of them today on the road and them say boy who no go take it this time because them see what go on And Jamaica comrades, Jamaica needs a new government, a new approach to governance. One in which we don't tolerate hanky panky. We don't tolerate slackness with the people's money. And where we're honest with the people and we don't try to trick the people and spin the facts and make the people misunderstand the situation that they are living in and get confused. We must be honest with the people at all times. The road of development is not an easy road. It requires vision and it requires a heart of care for the people. And I and I on this stage, that is what we are about. That is what the leaders of the PNP over the ages have been about. From Daddy Manly time, who was the architect of independent Jamaica, bringing the right to vote to Jamaican people before Daddy Manly put in the effort and got universal adult suffrage in 1944. You couldn't vote in Jamaica unless you were a money man. And the PNP was formed to overturn those iniquitous things. And give the people their proper place in this country. And it started with the right excellent Norman Washington Manley. Heal the man. And he went through to his son. Michael Norman Manley. A.K.A. Joshua. Who delivered a revolution. A social revolution. A peaceful revolution in this country. Ten years after independence, nothing had changed. Poverty was high. Unemployment was high. The system hadn't changed. Ordinary black people in Jamaica never had their rights. And it's Joshua Manley who said, No bastard, not there again. Everyone lawful. Who said, Women must get maternity leave with pay. Workers have a right to redundancy pay if they are lose their job because the job is no longer available. And the Industrial Disputes Tribunal is there to bring justice for workers. And the workers of this country remember that. And the next PMP government will continue that work and that tradition. The contract work system where workers are deprived their basic rights and benefits through legal devices like the contract work. In situations where it is just a sham, it is not a real situation, we are going to bring legislation to deal with that situation so our workers have their rights and their dignity and their respect in the workplace. The next PNP government has to be a government of progress when it comes to things like access to beaches, when it comes to things like how Rasta Pickney are treated in schools when it comes to things like indigenous people's rights, the Maroons and so on. We must be respectful and engage in dialogue with them, respecting the history and their struggle and make sure that they feel justified that the government of Jamaica is looking out for their interests as true parts of our society here. Comrades, we have a lot of work to do. The fundamentals of the economy are wrong. The macroeconomics is fine. The debt is coming down. We have strong reserves. We have interest rates which are starting to come down again, etc. But the economy is not growing and the economy is not generating wealth for the people. And the economy is stagnant and it's only a PNP government that cares for the people, can make the necessary reforms and changes to the system to uplift the people and allow our Jamaican people to reach their true potential. Education is the key. Jamaica, the PNP has always been about education. We are the ones who introduced free education in the 1970s, primary, secondary, and tertiary. At the time, we struggled to afford it. 
but we are committed to an education system that has delivers high quality education from the early childhood through to primary, which is the plumbing of the society where the brains of our young children are formed and nurtured. We must ensure that they have adequate nutrition in schools. We must ensure that the teachers are properly trained to train them. And we must ensure that we put in the necessary investments so that by the time they reach 11 or 12, they are literate and they are numerate and they are ready to go to secondary school and achieve what they can and what they will. We need to have a training system that prepares our youths for the world of work by giving them the necessary skills for the jobs that are here now and the jobs that are to come. We must engage with the private sector and incentivize them to play a very active role in training our people, working with the state sector, heart and so on, so that our people can handle the high value added investments that are needed to make our people wealthy. This is part of our mission. We must rebalance our economy our economy is too dependent on remittances and tourism. Tourism has been the fastest growing industry and we appreciate that and we respect the tourist sector and the hotel sector. But it is always vulnerable to external and internal shocks. What about agriculture? What about rural development? We know that we are in a parish here that has the most potential probably of any parish to develop strong wealth for the people by the right support for agriculture while celebrating all farmer we have a brilliant general secretary the man is a doctor the man has a law degree and the man is our spokesperson for agriculture and fisheries and rural development and i am going to give him full support for the development of our agricultural industry because I want to see us reach our true potential in that sector to feed ourselves and export because we have some of the best produce in this country. A lot of it grown here in St. Elizabeth, but the farmers have been struggling. I went to Flagermans and I met with some farmers and they were telling me how they can't get access to any funding from the People's Cooperative Banks again because the requirements are out of reach. How them don't have no water supply and them have to spend how much money to get little water to just irrigate the land. Time come. To deal with those fundamental issues and empower our farmers so that we can become a strong economic country that has a properly balanced economy not just two stools two feet on the stool we want to have a stool that can stand up and whatever the winds may be blowing and comrades we have tremendous potential in the area of logistics jamaica is blessed because we are right on the trade routes for the ships that go through the Panama Canal and we have a vision where that we will further develop all of the logistics industries all of the warehousing and transportation systems maritime aviation and rail and get people to invest major funds in this country because we can do value-added activities here that our people will get quality jobs and where our people can uplift themselves and our GDP can move from being relatively low compared to our CARICOM partners to being on par with them and moving ahead of them. Comrades, these are important things that must be done. The GLP doesn't have a model of economic development. They inherited the model of financial management from Peter Phillips and Portia Simpson's Miller government and they continued with that. And yes, we're glad because the debt is now where it is. We started it and they continued it. But it can't make our people happy and it can't make our people rich. We need a more proactive policy around social development, investing in our people so that our people can be the source of the wealth of the country. And the People's National Party is fully committed to that. That is our vision and that is our mission because that is what Jamaica needs at this time. So people, you're going to hear a whole heap of arms house argument in the weeks and months to come. You're going to hear a whole heap of lies and a whole heap of distortion. They're going to try to bring me down. They're going to try to bring down our key spokespersons. And they're going to try and trick the people and fool the people. And I say to you, 
Don't be confused or distracted or misled by any propaganda, whether through social media or the traditional media. Stand firm physically and in your mind and be part of the agents of change that are coming to make Jamaica a better place for all. PMP and Labour right and no P because we're not partial and we're not victimized. One Jamaica and it's the PNP that have to lead it. Cause our hearts clean and our hands clean and we're on the mission and we're going to do it for you and for your children and for your children children in the name of God Almighty. One love comrades, one heart, the word is love. God bless you all. Comrades, you heard it from the party leader and the next prime minister Everybody of Jamaica. Everybody vote for Mark Bolin. We go so, for the fist. We have the hand, we go so. Walk around, it's trick or turn, we go so. PNP, we go so. PNP, we go so. Yeah, man. And I need to close the proceedings by one formality. It is with great pleasure that I present to you your candidate for the next general elections in the great constituency of South East St. Elizabeth, the one, the only, Norman Scott. Comrades, do what we have to do. Ensure the victory. Do it with honor. Do it with love. But do it in a very serious way. Come up. Lily, we're coming hard. Forget this one. One love, comrades.